Hey folks, just me Dash V here. Sorry I've been away for so long, but I'm gonna make it up to you because today I'm gonna show you how to install flame and frames into your speaker grills on your Stern Spike 2 machine. They look gorgeous on Godzilla, but there's another game that these will really, really complement quite well. Link in the description, but stay tuned for installation instructions. Now, as you can see, my Mandalorian Premium already has some lighted speaker grills in it, but personally, I think I'll show you a without lighted grills. I'll show you with lighted grills, and I will show you with flame and frames. And you can kind of judge for yourself which is better. Personally, I think for a game like Mandalorian or a game like Godzilla, the flame and frames are the way to go. However, pinball, is a game of personal tastes and preferences. So your mileage may vary. Let's tear into the installation. All right, before you get into this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the appropriate tools and items handy. According to the instructions, you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver, a hex driver, a 5 16 socket, and a 1 4 socket. And if you're installing a North American power supply, you're gonna to wanna to have an 11 seconds bit at the ready as well. They also recommend some electrical tape. That's for cable management. You could also use zip ties, which I prefer, but uh, it's up to you. Also, there's about three sets of instructions, depending on if you're installing acrylics, depending on whether you're a North American or European power supply user. Um, so I definitely encourage you to read the instructions thoroughly for the flame and frames kit before you get into the install. You don't wanna be learning this as you go. You don't have to pull the glass. You don't have to lift the play field, but you will be in the back box. If you're going to be connecting to the dollar bill acceptor, you're actually going to be, spoiler alert, going into the power supply a bit. So you're gonna to wanna to know what you're getting into before you're getting into it. Disclaimers out of the way, let's get started. First things first, cut the power. Now, for this particular mod, it's not gonna be enough to cut the power. You're also going to want to pull the power cord. Now. With the power cable removed and the system powered off, you can go ahead and lower the speaker grill. I recommend resting underneath it a couple towels and remove the keys from the back box uh, speaker grill before you set it down. We're gonna be removing these support straps here and this will be resting directly on the glass. So you don't want your keys there to drop and scratch the glass or to put pressure on the glass. And um, you might want to have this here as a temporary and very gentle workspace. So uh, this is what you'll see for the back box uh, behind the grill um, out of the box from Stern. Uh, you've got your speakers here. There's four bolts that hold it in place. And then there are two screws that stick to the LCD. Important thing to note, and this is in the instructions as well. It's actually these side plates that support the speakers that also keep your LCD properly positioned. So it is highly recommended that you only remove one of these, remove and replace only one of these at a time. Um, otherwise you will have your uh, LCD display come loose and maybe move around a bit, reposition. Uh, it's gonna be a really pain in the ass to get that back to where it was before if you don't heed that instruction. So we're gonna take our 5 sixteenths and we're gonna start on the right. And we're just going to undo these. And in fact, I'm gonna hold underneath here ever so slightly as I do that. I like to also have on hand a cup that I can uh, hide and hold the nuts and bolts and washers. I got two washers kind of tucked in there that don't want to come out easy. Now, I would recommend just leaving them, but be aware of them so that when you lift this up, you can take those out. So I'm going to set this down on 
my, I'll set it down right. Let me lift this up for a moment so I can show you. If you're gonna set this down on your towel, set it down in a vertical position. Don't set it down like this because it'll roll down and off the towel and across your glass and scratch your glass. If you must set it down, ideally don't set it down here at all. Ideally set it down on a work table, have a workbench work table nearby. Uh, but if you must set it down on the glass, set it down on a towel on the glass and make sure it's in the vertical, not horizontal position. Little bit of a pro tip there. Okay, next you're gonna notice these are the screws here that keep the LCD plate mounted in. So we're gonna hold from the bottom. And we're going to remove those screws. You wanna be careful not to strip the heads on these. So uh, you can't usually get, ideally you'd wanna get a perfect alignment with the screw bit head but you can't, it's gonna be slightly angled, so make sure you use as fat a Phillips head as possible to make sure you don't strip those bits. I like to use a magnetized tip for the reason that you see, you cannot lose those. So now, we're gonna use this a little bit later. We're gonna set it aside now remember, there was those two washers, so we wanna go ahead and pick those up, put them in our cup. Now, you're gonna to wanna to take your flaming frame. And these have, one of the sides is magnetic. So you'll notice for the flaming frames, only three of the four sides have it. So you'll have flames on the side, flames on the bottom, flames on the side. There will be nothing on the top. Another thing to keep in mind is these frames have a direction, it matters. You wanna make sure that you use the frame that is meant for the side that you're doing the install because the side that has the screws, notice one side has the screw mount holes, the other one does not. The one that does, the LEDs are actually fixed on that side with magnet. The other sides are a strong adhesive. You don't wanna tear the adhesive off um, but you will want to pull this aside. What I like to do actually at this point, that set aside, this can be a pain in the ass, the grounding wire on the right hand side speaker. Um, this can be a pain if you try to put this whole thing together and then put the screws in and then keep that there. It's pretty tight. And you're going to want to make sure that this sits between the LCD panel and the frame. So what I actually like to do is I like to get that started beforehand. So thread it through the ground wire, get it started, stop. Get it started, stop. Notice that these are slotted. Push that to the side and you should be able to push this right down in you wanna make sure that the ground wire is on between the frame and the LCD panel, but you wanna make sure that these little, uh, on the screws, there's these little bitey gear things that allow the, the screw to kind of bite down. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that those are on there with a nice bite. And then you just sink it down there. So, another trick that I'm gonna show you. This part here, You'll notice a little bit if I push, you'll notice that this slides up and down. There's just a little bit of give there. The reason for that is that there's a hinge right here. And this, these two bolts here are what mount the grill framing to the, the, the whole entire grill frame to the hinge to go up and down. So before you tighten these two bolts down, and I'll remind you when we go to do it, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these two bolts, uh, you push forward toward the back box while you tighten those down. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to close the grill afterwards. So for now, I just wanna make sure, kind of rest our hand down there. This is gonna to wanna to creep up as you tighten these screws. You just wanna make sure that doesn't happen. 
You don't need to provide a lot of pressure, just prevent it from coming back up. Okay. Same thing here. You don't need to provide a ton of pressure. You just want to prevent that grill from popping back up. Okay. Cool. Excelente. We're doing really good. You put those back. Just going to want to make sure that your grill is just kind of nice and you don't want to have any giant bubbles in the foam or anything like that. Some small light bulging and bubble is fine. I think it's actually unavoidable. Take this cable and cheat it to the outside. You're going to want to make sure to do that. Don't forget to do that. Take this cable while you're in here. Cheat that to the outside. Now, we're going to take our plastic stanchions. And you're going to want to be careful with these. You're going to be tempted to use your hex driver to put these on. Don't do it. Don't fall for it. This plastic is very malleable. And this plastic can be over tightened and the threads can get stripped very, very badly. Now, when you're screwing this part on, it's not really gonna make a huge amount of difference. You might dash, what are you talking about? This isn't a big deal. It's when you go to put the bolts down on the threading part, the screw parts of these, that will snap when you think you just got one more left to go to tighten it and you'll go and this will pop right off and be stuck in your uh, bolt there and then you're gonna be pissed off that you didn't listen to your buddy dash. That's less likely to happen if you're tightening this by hand. So now one thing to remember what I said, right? Before you tighten that fully down, push in. Make sure that is tight to the back box before you tighten it up. Now, if you want to, if you're insistent, dash. Oh, what's going on there? I think that one's actually defective. Look at that. Pretty sure that one's defective. <laughs> yeah, look, it's not even the right. That's a different size. They, they put the wrong part on that one. Notice that? Wrong part. All right. This should thread on there. So now if you say dash, I want to make sure that's good on the hinge. What the heck? Okay, if you're insistent, if you absolutely have to do it, go ahead and use a one-fourth, but I would highly recommend tighten it by hand. As soon as you feel the bite, stop. Stop. That's all it takes. You just want to make sure this doesn't move. It doesn't need to be Hercules' strong arm down. So now we've got the flaming frames in place of the original frames. And we're literally just going to put this on top of the flaming frames. So that's, that's all that's required there. Just gonna put our washers on first. I'm going to place that there. And we are going to gently, this is gonna take a uh, 5 16 actually. And these I highly recommend you just do it by hand. Okay. You're going to want to go more, but don't. I don't I wouldn't do any more than that. That's fine. In fact, if you're super nervous about it, For this one, because there's not a lot of thread on there, 
and you want to make sure that support string doesn't come snapping off later. Wow, really? For this one, you could get by with using this as your washer. So, oops. Wow. There you go. Be careful not to strip the plastic. It's very, very easy to strip the plastic without realizing that you've done it. Just want to make sure that that's tight and that it's not going to, like, pop loose on you. All right. So, for this one... Same thing, if you want to keep the cable management in there, if you really wanted to, you could cheat and just say, I'm going to put the cable management on there as my washer, and then tighten that down. Okay, one side done. Now with the right side done, we're basically gonna do the exact same thing with the left. The only difference here, the only difference, is that there is no grounding cable to worry about. So, slightly easier. I'm gonna fast forward through this one. Okay, only thing left only thing left is the power. A word on power safety. For the next step of this mod, we're going to be going inside the electrical box, looking for the dollar bill acceptor cable, and using that to connect into the brains, guts, and power of the Flame and Frames mod. Now, as long as you follow the instructions provided by the modder, as well as what I'm going to show you here, which is based on those instructions, you should be perfectly safe. That said, I'm not responsible for if you do something silly or stupid and get yourself hurt. So if you're super scared, one of the things you can do is... These are electrician's gloves. They are specifically tested and rated for protection against high voltage. In this case, up to 1,000 volts. Now, that said, gloves or no gloves, it's far easier and safer in every case to assume that there's power, even if you've pulled the power. So... Useful to have one of these so that after you've pulled the power, you can verify that the things aren't getting power before you touch them. So uh, when you're going to use the tester, super important. Test it on things that you know are receiving power. Test it on an outlet. Test it on the cord where it plugs in to the outlet. It should beep if it's properly calibrated. Then you can immediately use it to test the items that you believe should not be getting power. And once you've done that, do one last test again to the outlet or a cord that you know is getting power. Main reason is I've seen people use these before to test stuff, say they're good, complete an entire job, and then guess what? They didn't even have any batteries in the sensor. They were working on a live system the whole time. So be careful, be cautious. In this particular case, I'm going to use the tester, but I'm not going to use the gloves. So I know what I'm in there to do. I know what I'm going to touch and not touch. I'm going to be safe and cautious. I encourage you to do the same. I'll have links to the gloves. I'll have links to a tester. Your mileage may vary. Maybe you have better suggestions for gloves and testers. Let me know in the comments. Uh, this is an AC voltage detector. It's kind of like a magic wand. So you hit the button. Calibrate it. In this case, I'm just holding the up arrow to max out the sensitivity. And now I'm gonna to touch it to something I know has power. This is the cord that was plugged into the pinball machine. Now, if I go to other cords here, nothing, nothing. So we got no power to the system. The live cord is on the ground. We should be safe, we should be good. All right, so we're gonna go inside this box and there are two areas 
that you're going to want to uh, unbolt, basically. This area here, you don't need to touch the fuse. Leave the fuse there. There's a cutout. Literally, there's a, a bolt here. There's a bolt here. And then you can just pull this straight off. I find that it's more helpful, and the instructions even offer this up, if you pull the CN1 Molex off of the board, do be careful whether you're using a, a hex driver or whether you're using a socket wrench. The pins are right there. It's super simple when you're tweaking and torquing around to accidentally disrupt those pins. Just be very careful. Now, I found for these that I had to use an 11 30 seconds bit. All right. Okay. Oh my Godzilla, this one felt like it was welded on. It was very difficult to get off. Well, on this one, it's going pretty smooth. Be careful not to drop it down into <laughs> the play field. Uh, that could be, that could turn this from a 20 minute install to a two hour install. All right, we're not gonna set this on the uh we're not going to set this on the towel we're not going to set this on the glass we're going to set this on the carpet on the ground below be very careful that is very jagged it'll definitely cause some stuff so now in this mess of wires here sometimes this bundle is very clean sometimes this bundle is very messy so what you don't want to touch nothing up here there's no reason to touch anything here that's got the red and the blue not nothing up here needs to be touched um this bundle of cables, usually everything's all capped off and protected. Nice, um, but you do want to be careful. Don't just like reach in there, look and see what you got. What you're basically looking for is in this bundle of white and black and green wires, you're looking for a spare connector. And it will probably have an orange cap. It might not, but uh, in my case of Mandalorian and my case of Godzilla, it did. So you just take that connector right off. And what you're gonna see, I'll show you in a zoom out. Here's the cable that comes with the flame and frames. You just wanna double check that that power connector pairs with this. And you'll notice, if I can get the camera to focus appropriately, you'll notice that one of those is like almost like a cave, like if you're driving on the road and you decide to go through a tunnel, and then the other is a perfect circle. So that's what you want. It's just going to go ahead and snap in place. There's only one way that that can work. And something to keep in mind when you go to put this back on. So there are two lips to this. So this goes back on like this. There's two areas where cables come out of this. One of them is this area right here. There's a little bit of a lip where this upper cable for the CN1 is going to come out. So you wanna make sure that you clear that, you don't pinch that when you put this back. The other is all these cables uh, here, all this cabling here is just gonna come out through the bottom. So you just wanna make sure that uh, when you put those back, you're careful in that. Um, you should have plenty of cabling here. This is gonna go into the power brick for your Flame and Frames mod. The grounding cable is gonna come out and down. The bottom of this is totally open. So, um, so you should be able to get that there. Just double check that you're not pinching anything. There we go. Cool. Now, you've got two nuts here. I don't know if you were paying. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, so you got two here. You've got one that's just a normal nut with like a lock, plastic lock on the end of it. And then you've got another one that's got like the little gears that bite down. The one with the little gears that bite down goes uh, above the fuse. The one with the little plastic lock goes next to CN1. Uh, connection on the board so and then you can just go ahead and 
tighten those back up. I just like to double check. None of my cables look like they're pinched. Everything looks like it's fairly healthy. I'm gonna plug CN1 back in. Make extra careful that you don't accidentally get it off by one and only have some of the connectors plugged in there. So that all looks good. Uh, now we're ready to actually install the rest of the power uh, modules onto the, that are gonna power the actual flaming frames. All right, now the remaining pieces that we have are the brains of the operation and the power adapter. So uh, these do come with like a magnet on there a bit, they're magnet backed, but like they're not very strong magnets. So I just kind of, for mine, I just kind of tuck the power brick in the back. We can go ahead and plug that in. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, I like to keep this a little bit tied up there. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reuse the twisty ties. This came with twisty ties. I'm just gonna reuse the twisty ties uh, for my cable management. And I'm just gonna tuck that like that. Cool. All right, now for the brains of it, I literally am just gonna set the brains right there in a moment. Plug it in. This one's pretty snug. The other one that I had was fairly loose. It looked like that could come apart fairly easily. Um, so if you are gonna use electrical tape, I would actually recommend using electrical tape for this because this could be easy when you're moving around and stuff in there, depending on how tight and snug this is or loose. Very easy to pull this. So I will use some electrical tape on that. I don't think you quite need as much as I got, but there you go. Same thing here, cable management. I'm just gonna go ahead and use, I cannot find the twist tie that went to it, so I'll actually use one of my zip ties. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and set that right there, right in the back there. That should be fairly good. Now, you're gonna notice that for the actual speakers to plug into the brains, there's a couple ways that you can do this. It might be confusing at first. Let me break it down for you. So basically there's a Y splitter and there are two individual ones. Depending on where you're putting the brains of this, you could end up using all three of these no matter which you decide to do. There are a couple modes that the flame and frames can run in. One of the modes is you can have what's on the right and what's on the left be reversed images of each other. So whatever the flames are doing over here, they're also doing over here just flipped vertically. This looks really cool because it's very symmetrical uh, and it looks like continuous regular flames. Alternately, what you can do is you can have these running in a mode where the flames on this speaker grill look and act completely independent of what the flames on this speaker grill does. It really depends, again, on preference. I love the fact that it gives you the option. Personally, I prefer the flames to be symmetrical. I think it looks a lot nicer and a lot cleaner, but some people are fans of just variety. Really great that they let you have it either way. So if you want to have it so that it is symmetrical, what you're gonna do is you're only gonna hook into one of these two. It doesn't matter which one, but you only hook into one. 
Now, if you don't want it to be symmetrical, if you want it to be different flames on each grill, just don't use the splitter. Hook one speaker into one part of the brain and hook the other speaker into the other part of the brain. So it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. It is possible that you might have to use part of the splitter to get one of these to extend, depending on where you're putting in this into the board. Um, in which case you would just skip using the part of the splitter that you don't want. So because I want it to be symmetrical, I'm gonna plug in my extension. I'm gonna plug in my extension. And I'm gonna tuck into this same cable management down here. Tuck into the same cable management down here. And then I'm going to take and go into my splitter cable, both sides. And then I'll just hook into one of these because I want it to be symmetrical. And folks, the job is done. Now we just flip the grill back up, lock it down, plug the machine back in and fire it up and see what we got. Now, when you went to close it, if you had trouble closing it, the most common reason is that you did not uh, push these, the, the, the grill back when you were tightening the bottom two bolts on both sides of the frame. If that happened, then what can happen is this will sit too high up on the hinge and it will hit the top and not go in. Now, if you're not even making it that far and you can't go in, another thing that'll sometimes happen, and I'll grab the camera in a second and show you, there's a single bolt that holds the opposite side of the hinge down in the back box. If you're installing additional things like plastic acrylics and things like that, silhouettes inside, it's possible to push the metal plating for the speakers out so far into the cabinet that they start to get obstructed. They start to bite onto the bolts that are actually holding the lower, the lower hinge down. If that is your situation, you might either have to cut out on the metal enough to be able to clear those bolts. That's one solution. You might have to file down a little bit, uh, some of the acrylic or something in the back to give yourself just enough room to clear those bolts. That's another solution. Uh, but those are the two most common reasons why when you finish up this mod, you can't always close the back box. But you should be able to do it without too much fuss if you've done everything correctly. All right, so let's plug it back in. Fire it up. Very, very nice. I think that's a huge improvement. Here I'll show you another comparison without the speaker grill lights at all. With speaker grill lights that are just solid, changing colors. And here we are back to the flaming frames. This is the way. Let's give it a go. Now, spoiler alert. I'm terrible at pinball, especially when I'm trying to play around a tripod. I warned you. made it. I've been working on my shots. I'm getting better, but I'm still not good.
Yes! Oh, come on! I made that shot! Son of a gun. Didn't have enough oomph. The problem with the backhand is you can't always make it. And that's a toe shot, but I've, my reflexes are not that quick. It's much easier for me to backhand it. You saw I got the backhand twice, just not enough oomph. Dang it. Not gonna make that shot today. Oh. That looks cool with the red and the flames. Wasn't that a cool mode, folks? With the red and the flames, that looked pretty badass. Like I said, these flames really complement get certain games well. enjoyed the video this has been how to install flame and frames on your stern spike 2 machine demonstrated here with mandalorian premium i hope you learned something i hope you enjoyed it and if you want to find out more information about the flame and frames themselves different configurations different options extra detail on some of the things maybe i sped right through you can check them out at speakerlightkits.com and i'll put a link also down in the description meanwhile in the comments let me know what other games do you think would just rock with some flame and frames i can vouch for godzilla and mando look chef kiss just look amazing so what other games though do you think could benefit from this or have you installed flame and frames on one of your pins let us know do you have a video on youtube tell us we can go and check that out i love seeing what you folks do just as much as i hope you like seeing what i've done so and if you really like what i've done and you want to see more of it show that pride give me a subscribe give me a like, and uh, maybe set yourself up for notifications. So I don't always drop videos, but when I do, I hope they're worth it. So in the meantime, take care, everyone. This is Dash V, and I am signing off.